imagine you're feeling impending doom and your heart is racing and you're sweating and you feel like you might be having a heart attack. You need to know if it's a panic attack or something else so that you can get the right attention. So hang with me and I will help you figure out how to tell the difference. Panic attack can be one of the most scary experiences. And if you haven't had one, come to any emergency room and you will see it's very hard to distinguish between a heart attack, a panic attack, and people really feel like they're going to die. So let's get to the bottom of this together. And as a reminder, this is not individualized medical advice, just educational information. Now, remember, the panic reaction is a conserved reaction in your psyche, in your brain, that is there for a reason. If you're running away from a bear, you should have a panic reaction. So the first thing you want to think of, is there actually a threat? Is there a burglar? Is there someone about to shoot you? Or is there some kind of other threat that's not in front of your face, but that the panic response is an adaptive response towards? Because we don't want to exclude adaptive anxiety responses because there's good anxiety and there's bad anxiety. There's dysfunctional anxiety and functional anxiety. So don't forget that. Now, assuming this is not the case, of course, the most common interpretation of the symptoms are an actual panic attack. Here, people will have a sudden onset of sweating, chills, trembling, difficulty breathing, weakness, chest pain, pounding a racing heart, a feeling of impending doom. And it can come from out of nowhere or there can be a trigger. But if you get the right help, these will eventually get treated and there are excellent treatments out there. But it could be something else. So let's jump into that. It could be an overactive thyroid gland. Your thyroid produces hormones that can mimic a panic attack. And you can get this checked with a simple blood test. In addition, you want to think about your medications that you're on. It could be a side effect of some of your medicines. Adrenaline, stimulants like Ritalin and Adderall. Antidepressant medications often can result in an activation experience that feels panicky. In addition, albuterol, which is an asthma medication, can have this sympathetic nervous system response effect. Prednisone, which is a corticosteroid, can affect anxiety, as well as oral contraceptive medications like birth control or hormone replacement therapy and menopause. So don't forget to look at your medication list. In addition, you could be withdrawing from medication. There's the effect of your medication itself, but there's also the effect of when you stop taking the medicine or in between different medicine dosages, there's going to be a withdrawal effect for certain medications, especially if they have a short half-life. For example, anxiety medicines like Ativan, Xanax, these often result in withdrawal effects, which can feel like panic or what's called akathisia, or agitation. In addition, think about substance use because a little bit too much caffeine can induce a lot of anxiety as well as nicotine, as well as of course cocaine and methamphetamine. So you wanna think about what you're putting into your body, both in terms of medications and substances. Which is a syndrome, chest pain that can be caused by multiple different things. So it could be a heart attack, a blockage of the blood vessels around your heart, resulting in lost oxygen to your muscles of your heart. It could also be a spasm of your esophagus, which is the muscular tube that takes food from your mouth into your stomach. That's a very painful spasm, and it can feel like you're having a heart attack. There's also something called supraventricular tachycardia. This is when the electrical centers in your heart, which are above the ventricles, start acting up. And that can be a very scary experience. It almost feels panicky. Now, getting a little bit more into some of the other types of anxiety that can mimic some parts of panic. If somebody's having an obsessive compulsive disorder exacerbation or episode, the extreme versions of contamination fears, for example, can sometimes result in a type of panic reaction. So you have to look at the content of the anxiety as well as the behavioral manifestations, as well as the physiological reactions. Look at what the person is actually anxious about. What are they saying? Similarly, if somebody has post-traumatic stress disorder, the hyperarousal and other types of anxiety that result can sometimes feel panicky. So you want to think about what's the content of consciousness as well as the reaction. Get a better history about the person's past. Now, similarly, social anxiety disorder, if someone has a phobia or fear of social interactions or certain types of social interactions, and they're running away from things, that could also mimic some types of panic. So you want to get to know exactly what is on their mind. In addition, a specific phobia, for example, of closed places or heights or blood can mimic a panic reaction as well. So these are subtle things that you need to pay attention to as you get to know somebody. In addition, separation anxiety. For anyone who's had children, you'll know that the reaction can mimic something like panic. And this is not just in children, but adults also struggle with these things. So consider the phenomenology of anxiety. Illness anxiety disorder. 
somatoform disorder. These are things in which people often have intense anxiety and activation as a result of thinking about particular parts of their body or certain illnesses or the possibility of having certain illnesses. If something's a generalized anxiety disorder, it's going to be more ruminative, worry-oriented as opposed to specific episodes of panic, and it's going to be in multiple contexts and tends to not be as severe as what it's like to be in a specific panic episode. Similarly, we're getting into more rare things here, and probably one of the most rare is something called a pheochromocytoma, which, which is a result of certain hormones being overproduced in your bloodstream, and you can detect this through blood and urine tests. Very uncommon. Should always be on your differential diagnosis list. So I hope this has been helpful. If it has, check out this other video here or subscribe to my free newsletter. Take care. Thank you.